I'm CK. Tonight we've got another one from Zlob Modular out of Chicago. It's their fold applier. It's a wave folder and harmonic generator with lots of interesting feedback paths and some other wave manipulation stuff in it. And I like the last Zlob Modular product I did, so I'm looking forward to this one. We'll put it together, see how it sounds, and I hope you enjoy the video. Here's the package. Relatively simple package, that's always nice. Zlob Modular out of Chicago. I picked this up from thonk.co.uk where I get many of my modules. Let's start by looking. See, they did this the last time too. They don't have to tape this stuff together. Got them untaped, that's step one. And let's look at the front panel. And interestingly enough, here's the front panel. And here's the front panel. You can be all fancy and ornate, or you can be plain. We'll look at the plain side first, because we can read it a little better. So there's, it's the fold applier. This is the knob to fold, I assume. Let me look, let me get the pots and jacks board behind it. So that's a pot. Then we've got CV input. Actually, no, that is a pot. Okay, and actually that is not a, oh, I see. That's a little LED that shows you when CV is acting on fold. And then this is feedback, I think, because that's another pot. Uh, looking at this. So that's a pot with an LED. That's feedback with something here. There's three little, There's. it might be a switch. Let's call it a switch. And then there's an offset pot and a symmetry pot. And then... Then we've got jack for fold, in, in, out, symmetry, and offset, and there are LEDs for all of those. Oh, and then we've got cute little symbols on the translucent windows. It's kind of neat. And we're looking at this board. It's... Uh, Uh, looks like it was designed in 2018 and modified in 2023. Fold applier, and this is version 666. This board looks pretty good. All through hole plated, of course. You'd expect nothing less nowadays. Let's look at the other board. We've got a lot of these. I think these are these. Uh, I'll, we'll get to them in a second. Uh, number of ICs and a bunch of stand-up resistors which as if you follow my channel at all you know I don't like stand-up resistors much all diodes are 4148s it says right there looks like all the values are listed but many of them are kinda scrunched up and in some cases solder pads are on top of them so we'll probably want to diagram along the way also and this says it inspired by surge uh, another surge influenced so many people uh, and there's interesting things on oh and they've got the chip numbers on the back even though the chip will be mounted on this side but this is a 3700 this is a uh, 074 op amp, another op amp, another 3700, and another op amp. I forget what 3700s are. I, I should know that off the top of my head, but I don't. There's the chips in their little container. Power cord. And these are, oh, they're resistor packs. These are inline resistor packs. That's what they are. I thought they were, thought they were something else. Now, interestingly, 
Oh, see, that's a problem. This is where they should have used tape because, as you can see, one, two, three, four of these uh, eight resistor packs fell out. And they're loose in the bag, so I'm going to have to figure them out from there. In fact, why don't I do that now? Here's a bunch of, I assume these are 104s, they're probably 104s, tenth of a micro, yep, they're 104s, our resistors, none, not a big run of 1Ks or 10Ks, these are a lot of 1Z, 2Z resistors. It's interesting, there's a ton of resistors in here when you add those inline 8 resistor packs. Let me get another, get another bin for the mechanical bits. There's a pot, another resistor pot. Pot, 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 jack, jack, pot. And then we'll get these, oh, and there's a loose something or other in here. Huh, this is interesting, I've got more got more inliners than I have open positions on this. Unless I'm miscounting. I'm probably miscounting. Oh no, there's other holes in here. Let me see if I can read these. These are, that's a 104. They're easy to read. These are not hard to find the values on. It's a 102. And there's the sockets. And in here we've got kind of mixed bag here. They, they kind of mix mechanical with electronic, which is a little interesting to part out. Normally we have all the mechanical in one bag and electronics in the other bags. But not this time. And the knobs are cheapies, just press on, no, no nothing. Oh, that's a, actually a switch like that instead of a handle switch, a uh, paddle type switch. Trimmer, so we're going to have to calibrate this a little bit, I, I assume. Bunch of electrolytics. 3906, transistor, some LEDs, 78L05, that's a voltage regulator. Again, I'm separating mechanical from electronic here. That's why we're taking a little longer than normal on the on this part. There's another transistor. I'm just gonna dump these into my hand. But since they mix the mechanical with the electronic, I'm kind of, I want to separate them so I don't get confused. So that's what we got. So we'll get the soldering iron heated up and start putting this guy together. Pulled up the build guide from their website. Lots of good pictures. Looks like everything is in pictures, which is pretty neat, even though they're going on and on. So on the resistor arrays, we'll do the 100K first. On the resistor arrays, there's one common pin, usually marked with a dot. You can see it there. And then, I want to see how we're oriented here. We're oriented this way, okay? And you'll see on the circuit board, let me zoom in a little bit. Hopefully that'll focus. On the resistor array, the con there's usually a square pad which shows where the common pin for the resistor array goes. So it's pretty easy to figure out how to put them on. But we'll do the 100Ks first, the 104s. So we'll put that in. Now, the author of the build guide does say he prefers to put the He says, I like to face 
the text of the arrays out so it's easier to troubleshoot in case something got put in wrong. But you can't always do that because of the way you got to put them in. So we'll do all the resistor arrays first. Let's put one on to see how they go in. That's big solder. I don't want that. I want some narrow solder. I had to use big solder for a power supply I did the other day. But now we're back to regular size 0.031 solder. Solder goes in well. And that puts that together, so that's the way the resistor arrays go in. And not much more to say about that, so I'll put all those in with no commentary, and I'll speed up the playback. So for tonight, enjoy resistor array time. All the resistor arrays are in, and the next thing is putting in all the regular resistors, stand-up resistors in this case. Uh, he goes through step by step by step by step each uh, resistor. I'm probably not going to do that. Uh, I'm just going to put them all on, and uh, he mentions that some of them go on this board, add those later. I'm not going to add them later, I'm going to do them now. Because I like to get all the resistors out of the way at once. So we're going to take our 47Ks, and again, they have written the values on the little piece of paper, which is very convenient, so I tend to leave the little piece of paper on my solder pad so I know which one I'm working with, even though and you can read the color codes. But now one other thing, looking at his pictures, he has such neat bends when he bends over. I figured I may as well use my bendy pliers and try and be as neat as he was. No, I'm just going to fold them over. Because uh, <laughs> that's the kind of guy I am. And his pictures show you exact placement, but I'm just going to do my typical search around and figure out where they go. So for stand-up resistors, as you can see, you fold them over like that. And then when you find, well, I know where it is here. Here's a 47K here, and there's a circle where you put the body of the resistor and a line pointing to where you put the other lead so you know how it goes. And again, I, they're great for space saving. I'm never going to deny that. I just don't like... Uh, I, I'm always worried about them falling over, not falling over, uh, being pushed over into another resistor lead. Particularly on your rack when you got your hands behind the rack a lot and when you put your hand behind the rack there's the power cord so this is the back or the side depending on how this because this is going to be a 90 degree angle connection uh, you can push those around a little bit and I just am a little paranoid about that That's resistor time for this kit. And as you can see, there's a whole bunch of resistors. And one thing that he does that I appreciate for the stand-ups that are side by side, he does orient them opposite directions. That's at least some some fig leaf to say stand-ups are okay. Now we're gonna do the 
tenth of a microfarad, the 100 nanofarad 104 caps. There are uh, 10 of them, but there should be 12 here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. What? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Because he says 10 tenth of a microfarad caps. The remaining two go on the top PCB later. So I've got 11. And then we've got two nanos, two four sevens. I'm missing a... Unless they respun the board, which they could have done, uh, I'm missing one cap. Fortunately, I've got 104s. Everybody uh, should have 104s. Let's see. Let me. I'm going to count on the board to see what we've got. Actually, he says here the remaining two go on the top PCB later, and I'm only seeing one tenth of a micro. That's a 0.47. That's a 0.47. So he may just have been behind in updating the guide. So again, since I did the resistors on the top board, I'm going to do the 10 micro, I mean, tenth of a micro. These are our decoupling caps. And so the tenths, oops, there is one more, never mind. Lost my head, I got ahead of myself by one. There's all the 104s. Oh, he had the two, other two, the other one was, he points to it below this pot. Yeah, so on the picture, here's pot one, pot two, pot three, and there was a resistor. This 47K was actually here, and the other 104 went right there, but apparently they revised the design, which is always good. And we'll take the two, one nanofarad, which is barely, you know, one nanofarad of capacitance. I mean, what are you really trying to prove there? And they're 102s, and we'll find them. Uh, I could look at the picture. Yeah, look at the picture. And then we got 330 Pico. Then we've got, and again, he doesn't mention this because he does the this board separately, but I'm going to put the two uh, 0.47 microfarad caps there and there. I actually missed one of the uh, 100 nano, so I did need to go into my spares and get a spare 104. Package size is a little different, but it should be fine. Still the same material. Now we're going to put all the 10 microfarad electrolytics on. And this is where, when you clip them off, you might have a little challenge, or you might think you have a little challenge, because you can't see which leg is the long leg, which marks positive. But then you just look at the side, and where the white or grayish stripe is, that's the negative. And there's a nice plus sign marked on the board. Now we're going to put the pin headers on. These the pin headers that go on this board. They're the angled type because we're going to be going, I'll show you here in a second, as soon as I can find my other angled pin header. There it is. It's in the wrong bin. So these will go pretty much 
like this because they're going to interface kind of like this because he's making it so that the front panel is narrow but if you have a shallow skiff you may want to check that uh, I'll get you a final measurement on that when I put the front panel on so you can see the depth but for right now just know that they don't stack parallel they're at 90 degree angles to each other Oh, and by the way, if you know, you might have noticed, uh, I put these on uh, differently than he did. I put the short pins here. He put the long pins through there, and then the short pins going through here. Uh, as long as it doesn't interfere with anything, it doesn't matter. And now we're going to put the power header on. Oh, it's not a dual. It's two singles. That's okay. I like duals better, but twin singles works just fine, too. Now we're going to put all the dip uh, sockets on. And get them all set down. And I set them down that way so you can see that these two are longer than these two and you can accidentally put the shorter ones in one of the longer sockets and you might not notice it and when you do you'll say oh my gosh I gotta try and desolder this big old dual inline package socket which can be a real pain and that's the main reason why I have a heat gun is not for regular components but for things that have a lot of pins like sockets so again we're just gonna do one pin at a time to make sure they are flat and it's double checking that it's the right socket So I'll put all these sockets on and solder the pins, but I'll turn the cameras off for that. Sockets are all on. Now, you might have noticed a shift in the lighting. I finally got around to moving my work light. It, like for a year, it's been bugging me because I get glare off the uh, shiny component traces. So I changed it. Tell me if the lighting is no good for you. So what are we going to do now? Now we're going to take the two 104 trimmers and they're 104s which means they are 10 with four zeros after it. That's 104 and that means they're 100 ohm variable resistors or trimmer pots in this as they'll be used here. I don't know what we're going to be calibrating, but we're going to be calibrating something. That looks like uh, one for fold and one for symmetry. Now we're going to do, do all our 4148 diodes. And as you can see on the circuit board for the diodes, there's a heavy circle. That's where the black stripe cathode side will be and you got to get that right it's not like the resistors where it doesn't really matter but in this case it matters a lot because the polarity will be wrong and things either won't work at all or they'll work kind of funny and you won't know why they're working funny so the 4148s are all on and because I had peeked ahead 
uh, to look at what might go on this board and notice that change. Uh, I also noticed that you're going to need some jumpers, and I hadn't saved any of the resistor ones, so I saved some leads from the diodes to use as jumpers later. So let's see, he's got... Yeah, that's, uh, again, I'm looking at the picture of the top board, and it's got this diode, this diode, and then this uh, area had a resistor, a cap, and a resist and a diode that are not in this revision of the board. Okay, now we're going to do our four 3960, uh, 3906 transistors. And make sure you got the right ones. You don't want the 3904s. And you don't want the voltage regulator either. And the middle leg goes back. Some boards have it go forward, this board has it go back, and of course make sure the flat side of the transistor is facing the flat side of the printing on the circuit board. Yeah, tell me if you think I've got enough light here. I'm not quite sure I do. I may move the light again, but And now we'll do the O4s. And there will be two on this board and three on the pots and knobs board, I mean pots and jacks board. So we'll put all of them on now because again I'm not doing the board separately. Now we're going to do the two voltage regulators. You got to make sure you got the right one because there's a 79L05 and a 78L05. And one is positive, one is negative, and you don't want to get them mixed up. So I've got the 78L05 in my hand. And that goes here. Double checking. And now we're going to put the two power protection, polarity protection diodes on. These are the 4001s, the black ones with the gray stripe, and the gray stripe will be down on the white stripe on the board. Because again, these are also stand up. They go up here by the power connector. Which again just tells me why I don't want to use a stand up resistor or diode here. Because hypothetically, I can bend that over and contact one of those pins, but, you know, again, it's, it's, I'm just hyper paranoid about it. I've never had it happen. I just think the worst. And that's all soldered. Now, we're going to put all the ICs on, and again, there are pictures, of course, but also the particular values of the chips are also on the board, on the back of the board, not the front. Put one of the 0.74s on, and these are actual 
real Texas Instrument parts. And all the ICs are in their sockets. All the notches are pointing this way. <clears throat> now the next uh, thing that we would do is that jumper I got. It's for uh, changing jumping fuzz from high to low and it would go here but again let me bring this up. Let me set this down so you can actually see what I'm talking about here. I'm going to squeeze this down a little bit so it's similar si up, similar size. Nope, it's not going to do that for me. Okay, so here is, that's the 10K pot, that's the 100K pot. And here, you can see diode, capacitor, resistor, and fuzz. And that's what's missing right here. You can see this line of contacts, and it's not here. It looks like he moved it over here. Diode, cap, 47K resistor, and eliminated the need for the jumper. I don't know why, but this, the picture here is different than the board you'll probably get now for this later revision. And he says, do not use the high setting. So I think when he respun the board, he just got rid of the high. I'm going to get three 10K pots because we're going to we're moving up to the next phase, which is putting the pots and knobs together. And then we'll put the jacks on. Actually, no, I'll put the jacks on. No, I'm not going to put the jacks on now. He says, put the jacks on now. Uh, I'm going to put the other things in first because the jacks are so so hoppy in other words they jump out at the slightest disruption so I tend to put those on last now we'll put the LEDs in that one's a red one it says and it's stuck to my finger of course where's the other red one go and a red one goes up here there's a good flat side marker on the PCB, uh, which means that the long leg goes in the hole away from the flat side. And there we go, there's the LEDs. Now, we'll put the jacks on, and the ground pins are slightly offset. Some, peop some board designers offset them, some of them keep them in line. When they're offset, it does help them. It gives a little spring tension, so they don't tend to hop out quite as enthusiastically as when you put them all in straight. Now we're going to set the front panel on, and we've got the big decision, folks. Do we want the plain side, or do we want the fancy side? We're going to go with the fancy side. If they put all the effort into making it fancy, we're going to make it fancy. Now, none of these LEDs poke through. They're not like some other designs where the LEDs poke through. They're going to, we're going to push them up against those translucent panels when the time comes but the time is not right yet. I'm going to take my little clamp and clamp the board together, the two things together, shake it a little bit. Nothing's rattling except the LEDs. It's interesting, he's got some blacked out parts of 
his diagrams or his photos. He must have had a part in there that he didn't end up using. So I'm going to do one pot support pin and one jack down here. And with those in place, I'm going to finger tighten a couple of panel knots. Got to remember which one I did. I did this one. Now I can get rid of that clamp because it's kind of in our way. And then make sure the... I'm not going to do the LEDs yet. They'll be the last thing I do. But I'll solder all these pins. Now we'll do the LEDs. I'm going to do them one at a time. We want them straight on behind the little window. Now I'm gonna not, oops, silly thing. Let me get this stood up again. The problem is the whole pattern on my pad is not big enough for me to insert it. So I'm gonna go there, and that's not straight, so I'm going to heat that up again, and it's straight, and it fell over again, of course. And as I flush cut that pin, it looks like it's not soldered well enough, so let me get it back in there. Now, we put the two boards together. So it's going to be just like so. I think this light is not working out. Again, you can tell me if it's light enough for you. If it's not, I'll go back to the other configuration. So I'm going to solder one pin because you may be able to see it's not quite at a 90 degree angle. So I will solder that pin and then reheat that and get it to 90 degrees. Now I'll solder all these pins. Now we'll put the rest of the panel nuts on, and you'll notice I'm ignoring the washers. I never put washers on your rack boards, primarily because my stuff doesn't move. I don't carry modules around or use them in any other setting than my studio. Now we'll turn all the knobs, make sure they're all counterclockwise, and put the little caps on. And that is that. Let's put the power connector on, and you'll see it's got a good red stripe indicator on the board. So that's the front. That's this side. Not really a back. The other side, top, and bottom. And let's put it in the rack and give it a try. I mean, it's going to take a little time to set up the oscilloscope for this one, but you won't notice. And I am going to move my light again, because that lighting did not do well. So see you in a bit.
And we're in the rack. And uh, let me bring up the scope. Let me sit down. So one thing I did, I already uh, ran this just a little bit. I set the symmetry, I mean the uh, fold pot, so I got a little audio, uh, undistorted audio when I went in clean. So the top line on the oscilloscope, the yellow line, is going to be the uh, unfiltered signal. The second line, the magenta line, is going to be the post uh, fold applier. And as you can see, it's already got, we're reading that, and it's already got a little wiggle in the waveform. So let's put a signal through it. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, that LFO is too low. There we go. So as you can see there, it's for the most part the signal in is the signal out. Let's do a little folding and watch the lower waveform. That's, a, that's only a third up. That's an interesting folding. Let's go halfway up. Three quarters of the way up. All the way up. Okay, I'm gonna come back down. We'll be at about a third up right now. And now I'm going to try uh, CV, changing CV a little bit. And this switch, I think that's feedback off, I believe. Then feedback on. We'll try the offset. see that. I'm going to take the uh, fold all the way off. Oh, that was, and then I have to bring CV back up. Now we'll try offset with a simpler waveform. You can see it a little bit and you can hear it a little bit. I'm going to take that back to the center. And now we'll try symmetry. That really flattened it out. See, it took it all the way down here. I'm going to take symmetry to about a quarter, I mean three quarters, and then do some more folding. Some awesome waves. Let me do uh, some CV for this. We'll do the fold CV first. Oh, that's going really fast. Going to do a slow triangle wave. So when it's at the zero crossing point, it doesn't make any noise. It effectively mutes it. Let me take it up real fast. I'm going to change the CV all the way up there. I'm going to turn feedback back on. I think I can do something about this. Let me, I think if I adjust the uh, symmetry trim, if I can remember where I put my screwdriver, there it is. Now with the symmetry trim all the way up, 
uh, there's no dropout. That's pretty neat. I'm going to take this all the way back down again. Yeah, I'm not sure I really like that. Or I'll just have to get used to what it does. I'm going to turn the speed on it way up. So that's what happens when you use the fold input. Now I'm going to take this into symmetry. I'm not sure I'm seeing anything there. But I'm also not getting an LED, so I'm not sure. Oh, that's because I don't have it turned up. Gives it a little motion. It seems to like the lower frequencies better. Let me just... Now we'll try offset. You can see the line dancing. I'm going to try, I'm going to plug everything in. What the heck? Well, that's kind of fun. I'm going to take these LFOs all fast. Taking them slow again. Taking all the uh, CVs out. I'm going to trim this back a little bit again. And as you can see, as I trim it to the left, the line flattens out. And if I take it all the way up, So adjust that to your taste. There's no right or wrong on that one. It'll be whatever you like it to be. Uh, symmetry. I'm going to do a little tweaking on that too. Let me see what change in that trimmer does. That's the trimmer all the way out. And let me take fold all the way out, or pretty much out. Now symmetry all the way up, coupled with moving the sim knob. I'm going to go higher volume on my sequencer, I mean higher frequency. Now I'm going to go all low. I 
I think I like what it does to low frequency signals better. So that's what it does. It sounds pretty neat. It's got lots of uh, potential and a lot you can do with CV and setting the trim on the uh, fold and symmetry to your taste will be important. But as you saw, uh, the build's not easy because there's a lot of resistors to fold around and put on and there are a couple of areas where the pictures in the build guide don't actually match uh, the current board design, but that's minor as such things go. It's a, I'd call it a moderate level kit. And it sounds pretty good, and I'll be getting some more from Zlob uh, Modular as we go along. And I hope you enjoyed the video.